The British are coming! The British are coming! They are here at Blandersburg for the Battle of Blandersburg fought in the War of 1812 in 1814. So we've gone on a few years now. The War of 1812, you know, it's progressed past 1812. But yes, we have a Britain versus US showdown here today. Uh, the little, uh, like, the little child that, like, Britain has birthed here, America, has uh, decided to actually challenge them on the battlefield once again. And, yes, they are going to see if they can re- well, change history and beat the British this time. Uh, in history, this was a British victory and did actually lead to the burning of the White House. Uh, the British forces after Blandersburg marched on Washington, D.C. and did burn the White House down to the ground. Um, the American, I mean, it's not like a large but uh, like battle. Like, there's only 64 British that were killed, uh, which is actually more than uh, the Americans had killed. They had only lost somewhere between tw 10 and 26 men. So it's not like many men are going to die in this one. Oh, you'd be wrong. This is one of the closest battles I have ever seen in NTW3. Comes down to the wire. And I mean the wire. Like, this battle it comes down to like two or three units left. I am really excited to show this one off to you guys. It's a really fun one. And it really, really does encapsulate what, encapsulate what like, NTW3 is about. It's just, oh, great battles and, like, just great vibes with some great people. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. But, yes, if you want to see more NTW3 on the channel, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment show your support. It really does help out the channel. But yeah, this was actually a, um, this was, like, a battle that we did on the uh, NTW3 stream. We do an NTW3 stream once a week. Definitely worth stopping by, coming, like, chat to us the subs and uh, or maybe get involved in the battle yourself if you're like an NTW2 fan and you're more than welcome to come and join uh, the link for my discord is in the description if you want to like get involved in any of our streams or scenarios we have the West Indian infantry here these boys joining the uh, joining the British fighting the Americans here today we've got some some actual proper British infantry as well, we've got 60 second wolves to cut, they look glorious, and we've got manly power here with his royal fusiliers, we've got some good units, but yeah we have, uh, I believe two different Ross calls here, we have, um, they're out on this uh, right flank, and then the left flank is actually made up of two Brock uh, calls, um, with like confederacy as well, so um, so they've got like Indians, uh, like support troops as well, so I mean yeah, there's a bunch of like Indian skirmishes out here that are, uh, well, Indian Native American, I should say. Um, and they're threatening to flank around the, Ameri uh, the Americans, who are actually coming down this road as well. They've got a little bit of a way to go, so that first American force has got to deal with the full force of the British for now, while their allies are on the way. You can see rank by rank, we have the, uh, the Americans arrive. They have, they're also, like, in, like the um, HRE and, like, Austria and other factions like that, they also have a bit of a mismatch of uh, uniforms. They're not they're not regimented like us Brits. They don't just have the basic red uniform. Yeah, this, this battle here, it's got a lot of skirmishes in it. A lot of like small annoying cav units. Uh, but it's a really fun battle. It really was. I, I enjoyed this one thoroughly. What's the uh, Wiltshire fuck called? The Moonrakers. It's an interesting name. I'll give it that. These guys are actually in their great coat. So they're also um, helping with that mismatch sort of look today. I also like the white drummer boy, it looks pretty sick actually. And what we got behind here, we got the Royal Marines, the bootnecks. So look at these guys. Oh, they got top hats as well. What gents as they go into battle. British cab right in front of the, uh, uh, sorry, American cab right in front of the Brits. Getting a few volleys off from them, scaring them off. You can see the Americans already on the run. Not happy with uh, their position. They did take a fair few losses up here on this slope. Uh, certainly a lot more than the uh, than the British who lost a few West Indy troops and that was about it. You can see here that the British really flanking around and oh massive losses here for the British. All these native Indian skirmishers actually routed here by looks like some dragoons of the Americans here. So uh, nice early victory there for the Americans killing off a lot of skirmishers. Um, which I mean I think they were kind of expendable. They weren't really needed. And uh, yeah there's also like some skirmishers back here that are... Uh, harassing the Americans, trying to do some damage, these Native Americans in here. 
minding their own business, having some shots. Look at this guy up here, he's just got a perfect view. He's got scars all over this his face, jeez. The there you go, they've been kicked out. I mean, they were just a skirmish unit. I wasn't expecting them to hold it. Um, but there is a, one more final British unit at the back over here, uh, which the Americans decided to just ignore. So uh, we'll have to see whether they can actually come into the battle and be of any influence. Um, but yes, I mean, the Americans are on the way. The reinforcements are on their way. The battle's actually not going to really take, in, uh, take part around Blandersburg as such. The, like, that's that large town that the British has came from. Uh, it looks like it's going to take place around this uh, this town here, which is called Colum, Coloman, Something like that, I think. Um, but yeah, that is going to be where the, t uh, the battle takes place. The British here with a little light dragoon the Emperor's chambermates actually getting in there, routing some Americans here with also wearing top hats. Both sides fighting with sophistication here today. Yeah, again, the American Dragoons coming in by the looks of it, and they're uh, helping to route um, those British troops. Again, the Americans just are here with a Dragoon unit. But there was such a fuck, and I'm like, put some rounds into them? Because they really should. No, they instead they form square, which is, I guess, a good precaution. Yeah, the American Cav there definitely could have maybe just got charged. They maybe could have just charged that Cav. Might have been a decent. Uh, He's going to get rid of it. Got French Canadian vo voyageurs here. I mean, this is going to be one of the few French units, few French units fighting with the British in this time period. We may be in 18, uh, maybe the War of 1812, but the Napoleonic Wars is still going on, and the French and the Americans technically, I guess, are on the same side, in a weird way. Even though there's two separate wars, I guess they are sort of friendly. Francis de Rottenberg here with his Canadian chasseurs. Norfolk Militia, more Canadian chasseurs, York-like fencibles, yeah, more Canadian chasseurs, wow, lots of, lots of Canadians here, no surprise, I mean, that is where the main British army did come from at this point. Uh, most of my cav consisted of mounted guides, um, men just in top hats, yeah, so I mean, my cav was nothing special. Our only decent cav is the British, I believe, more mounted guides, is maybe back here, if I can find it. It's the, yeah, the in-skilling Dragoons, so yeah, the skill engines, these are actually pretty s uh, solid. Um, yeah, Dragoons are just uh, basically British Heavy Cab. Um, they are really, really strong. They're not a big unit, only like 40 of them, but hopefully that will be enough to uh, help route a few of these cab units. And the Americans have plenty of cab. I mean, out here on this side here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six there alone. So, I mean, yeah, they are... Really sacking the cab up on this side against this uh, Brock army of on this side. So as you can see, the British are moving forward with their mainly militia. I mean, there's a lot of militia here. We've got the Welsh foot. Yeah, a lot of militia in this British army here today. Guns here just getting taken out. So that's a big win there for the British taking out the guns. Yeah, the Americans have fallen back. But who do you think is going to win, guys? Are you Team America or are you Team uh, Britain? I know I have a fair few subs from both America and the UK. So it uh, be interesting to see who you guys are voting for. Who do you think is going to win? And I'm sure anyone that's uh, from a country that's, well, just like Britain, you'll be, fight, you'll be with the Americans here today. A.K.A. John. I mean, yeah, the Americans got some fancy ass that sort of has. I don't know what this that is like. Some like what like the Bedenberg troops have over in uh, Germany at this time period. But I mean, the British here having to try and deal with this uh, tree line. Neither side's actually really like in it in the actual trees, but both sides are uh, um, sort of using the tree line as cover. And the Americans here. Being forced back once again. And the British doing a pretty solid job. That artillery actually is just hitting this rock here. That's not that effective. We've got plenty of artillery being set up though over here. Nine pounders, six pounders as well. So yeah, I'm excited to see. I mean, it's a decent slope. So we're excited to see uh, how the British go about this. I mean, it's going to be 
the battle that really like is decided around this town by the looks of it. I don't think the Americans will want to fall back any further than that. But I could be wrong. The Americans also have a tree line over on their right that they could certainly use. Yeah, this is a messy old fight here. Ah, oh, wasn't ready. Very nice. Oh, so you're trying to put holes into this American line here. I, this unit you know, looks quite cool. I don't know if they, they've got any like grenadier sort of units, or maybe their marines count kind of, as like grenadiers. These are like carabineers. These guys are like goons with dismounted um, sort of thing. They look really cool. Got some routing troops here. The Americans already. Starting to feel the squeeze a little bit. But yeah, the Americans in a, in a line fight, that's not how they're going to win this fight, I don't think. They've really got to get into uh, melee. British uh, infantry in like a line fight seems to be much better. The 100th Prince Regent in Dublin. Oh, wow, what a name. Also with white hats. Again, kind of going with a little bit of a different style for the British here. Royal veterans calling up the old and the feeble that have fought already in previous wars for Britain to come and fight them one more. They thought they were safe from retirement. Oh no. There's a long, long line right now at the moment of British infantry. We got here Isaac Brock coming up. We've got guides here as well. Yeah, nothing exciting. We've got some skirmishers on the flank here. The Canadian Voyagers. I mean, if these skirmishers, I mean, it's the first time I think I ever brought skirmishers really to a fight. I was just trying to use my skirmishers, trying to annoy the cav like it always does in, in battles where I'm facing skirmishers. I was just like, just stop shooting my cav. So I was always getting annoyed at. So it's not going to do to the enemy here today. Trying to just. Whittle down their cavalry numbers bit by bit in my stern. And here we go, cavalry coming in. The Americans, and I mean, they did actually route my Voyager. It's pretty easy there. But we route their cav even easier. There's mounted guides doing themselves proud. It's pretty. Yeah, pretty impressive. Only losing one guy. And now you can see the Americans retreating again. A line fight just does not work for them. Not at all. Artillery is like really close here. Look at this. This is definitely like an 8 or a 12 pound or something like big. Uh, people were saying like the comments, like saying, oh, like the size of the gun does not mean the, uh, like, how, like, what, uh, like, pounder it is. Like, like the larger the thing. Obviously not. But, uh, they, like, if you see the three pounder models, they're nothing like this. If you just play the game enough, you know, you're kind of aware of the models. But yeah, this is something like an eight or a 12 pounder thing. It could be a nine, I guess, as well. Eight, nine, something like that. See, this is something much smaller, like a six pounder. I mean, I can make a good example, a good case. You see over here, this is like what a six pounder looks like. Exactly like the one we've really just looked at the Americans firing. And then I think there's a nine pounder over here. Yeah, nine pounder's a little bit more chunky. A little bit, not much, but just a little bit. So that one over there that we saw now abandoned, it's probably like a 12 pounder. The line fight's really intensifying though, over here now. It's looking switch down now. So we've got lots of Canadians here, chasseurs fighting. They're actually got like mitre hats, a bit like the um, grenadiers, a bit weird. They certainly won't fight like Grenadiers, sadly. Fire when ready! They're also not like... They all don't hold their rifles the same way, which makes me feel like they're more like a militia unit. Um, and I get that sense even more seeing that one unit break already. Yeah, how's the line fight? I mean, we're seeing some like orange and not quite red morale yet, but some orange morale for some of these American units. But yeah, neither side really 
breaking or giving way just yet. British uh, forces now arriving outside the town. We've got the Royal Marines here and the Wiltshire Foot. I'm gonna go to Com. I mean, what Scotians here charging in? Brave, brave Scotians, and then we have the cavalry coming in. It's a nice little move there by the Americans. Now, I think the British read it. I'm not quite sure. Combat's even. Yeah, the Americans did get routed there with their cav, which is, I mean, it's a nice little move trying to get the Skirmishers to tie down the. The British in combat and then sitting in the cab to try and break the unit. I mean, yeah, you can see this Wiltshire foots down a lot of men now. So, yeah, it was a nice little move. Seeing more fighting going on over here. The Americans charging into a whole bunch of Native American skirmishers here. And they've just about held on. Well, I say that there's another unit over here which are fighting in red. How dare they use the king's colours? Man's guides in here. Trying to slow down these, uh, these American troops. Sadly, they have been routed. There's actually two American units out there. So that's a little bit of a worry. We're going to need some more cover over there. We've got mount more mounted guides. Um, what's this? We'll just like more uh, like light infantry. Yeah, that is it for cavalry that's on this flank here for Britain at the moment. We are seeing the inscaling dragoons moving across, which is good to see. And we're seeing another dragoon unit over here move forward straight down the road. Looks like they might be about to go for these guns, which is not a bad choice here. I mean, this is a very open gun position. It's just asking to be charged here. And then they go. And there's six farmers dead. I mean, is a general? Oh, is this a general? No, it's a, it's a dragoon unit. It's a, it looked like a general unit with the uh, white horses and being such a small unit. The dragoons here, my route. They need to be careful. They lost a fair few men there, but nothing too, too serious. Uh, British infantry on this flank here actually getting routed by uh, by new no, not by Newfoundland fencibles by the American cavalry. But yeah, Newfoundland fencibles gone. You can see that the, uh, the Americans are starting to wrap around the British line, trying to, uh, to catch them out. There's Essex militia still alive here. But that's about it. I mean, there are more British infantry now appearing here, and they're going to come forward and try and help. And we are starting to see a little bit of red morale from some of the American troops. So this is Britain is a little bit more thinner on the ground over here, and they're actually sending two line platoons over here. Monmouth Foot, Light Foot, and the Bugs Volunteers. They're being sent to deal with some skirmishes. Don't know how great an idea this is. It's quite a large body meant to deal with three skirmish units. Something that I'm sure could be dealt with with uh, one cavalry charge. Fire when ready. Okay, well maybe not. These boys are taking the heavy hits. A British soldier should be able to fire three rounds a minute in any weather. That's what they say in a uh, sharp series. And that's what I believe. Arguably it is about uh, accuracy, but if you can reload quickly and just keep pouring fire into the enemy, then you've got a good chance of outgunning it and winning. You see over here, Britain is doing a very good job with this flanking force here, of pushing back the Americans. Whether these infantry units here, these three could flank around, like in this gap here, and then threaten the flank of the Americans, and whilst also supporting this other American army. I don't know what the uh, British cat uh, British, the American cows back here is doing. It's running from the inn's killings, that's why, because they've actually routed not one but two 
Cavalry units. Actually, no, I think this one's already gone, but certainly one. Nearly two, in fact. This, uh, oh, it was two. Wow. Impressive. And then we're going to see cavalry charging in. This is into militia. And this militia can't form square. They're in real trouble. They actually might just about kill off this, uh, this cab. I mean, they're losing slightly, but... I mean, the unit form the square here, can it just serve? It's been some good rounds into these guys. And there you go, just about will survive. The militia did its job. Again, over here, the militia's fighting from combat. Don't think this will work, but hey. Is it all sort of glitch out there? Oh, and then they just fired into the back of these guys. Poor guys. Poor Americans. Oh, no, British, sorry. And it's going over here, helping to route some of these, uh, these lights. Britain needs to get moving, needs to get pushing if it's going to support these sort of cavalry fights. If, I don't know if you've been like, just looking at all their uniforms, but the Americans really do have a mismatch of uniforms. It's really weird. I guess they're a new nation. Maybe they haven't got standardized uniform. They just haven't got around to it. Give us the volley, boys. I mean, these guys, again, with the top hat, give you like, real, like, sort of, like, grenadiers of Prussia sort of, like, look. Which makes me think... Each time I see them, they're grenadiers. They're even charging again. Like combat. I can hear it somewhere. I can't see it. A little bit worrying. It might be over here, actually, where the uh, British have been caught and all that militia that had survived is now dead. We have got plenty more infantry, actual proper infantry. Moving out this way as well, so they're gonna flank around. Hopefully, they can help push back these American scum that have dared to come and challenge the British. King George will not accept it. Mikey won't accept it when all those Americans rebelled many years ago. We've got mounted guys now charging forward. Little, little man you here, they're gonna go in. Charge head on into the Americans here. And they managed to break one unit. And when one breaks, you can often break a couple more. You can see morale here. Starting to shoot down. The second one breaks. Morale though for the mountain guys, not looking good. Winning decisively in the combat. It's impressive. Breaking three, four. And there you go, the American center is kind of crumbling. Five units gone. And then you have the British break. But it's a really good charge. Very nicely done. Whether the British could have carried on and got these last units and then gone for the guns, I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, there's artillery here. It's spewing out canister. Try and hit these uh, these British troops ahead of them. They're doing a pretty pretty okay job, to be honest. But I mean, they keep look at this. I mean, this unit dead ahead is being carved into with a canister. I mean, you can't miss. Look at the line of sight they have. We'll wait for a uh, wait for a shot. I mean, they might have broken by the point that this cannon fires. They're already on red morale. Maybe the British would be better to charge them. Charge this damn tank. Oh, I think we got Cav. Yeah, Cav charged to come in. It, oh, look at this. They're failing to load the gun. I mean, the artillery are getting hit hard by uh, by musket fire. And again, the British going the British going in to fight the Americans in combat. There's some Kent militia here. Looking on the armies of America. The 
British here trying to uh, just get every angle possible again here, trying to get an angle on the Americans. Got manly power here, doing his thing with the uh, fuselier foot. The elegant extracts. What a name. The British have some of the best names, I think, probably for their uh, for their infantry. Probably helps I can read it um, with every other language. Well, bar American, I guess, being Our in men a, are running, sir. Being in a foreign language, I don't understand. Though I do sort of know my Spanish. But not that great. But yeah, America over on this side seems like he's actually pushing back the British. The British are pushing back to this tree line. Uh, center wise, still looking pretty good. The Americans, yeah, they're about to crumble. Um, as you can see there, I mean, they've not got much left. I mean, they just should just smash through to the British and then just worry about this uh, American line later. I mean, the artillery is here also harassing. The, the British, so that's obviously going to be a problem. Um, I think at this point, or at some point back here, um, yeah, the Americans came in, killed all of the British artillery. I did actually forget to show you guys this, but they killed all of the uh, the, the British artillery back here. So the British got no artillery left, but the uh, yeah the Americans are also in the back line. We have a bit of a fisty cuffs going on around here. Royal Marines, which I guess are like the uh, the Grenadiers today for the British. Getting in there, getting some decent kills. Manly power, you know, getting kills with the Fusilier foot. He's careful with his generals. If that is his general, down to 50 men. And the Royal Marines are gone. They're going to have to replace it with another unit. Maybe shouldn't have gone into combat. I was saying that the British should do better in a line fight. I guess I can understand why you want to put your Marines into the, into a line battle, uh, into an actual like infantry versus infantry, because that's what they're designed for. Again, over here, the British in combat. Well, a lot of good units actually as well. Just trying to rate one skirmisher. And there you go, the British have broken, but the Americans also did break. I think the British are going to follow suit here in a moment, but that is not a good start. And this assault in the centre here for Britain. We are coming up to the halfway point. So you guys have got some snacks, got you some drinks, and are prepared for a brilliant second half of the battle. Here's a weird question. Have you changed your mind on who is going to win this battle? Who do you think it's going to be Americans and I think it's Britain? Or vice versa? And the British are running away. Uh, what is going on over here? Oh, it's um, it's a little skirmish fight. So, I mean, yeah, the skirmishes... They've killed one unit or they've at least... Forced it to move on, and it's just left the Monmouthshire light foot here, which are, in fact, looking the wrong way. Um, so that's never a good start either. I mean, there's nothing behind the Americans they need to worry about just yet. So I mean, they seem they seem safe as houses. I mean, they've got the British just kind of where they want them right now, and they have them actually in a bit of a crescent. Here yeah, with the with the American cow in the back line, they can just. There's only so far the British can retreat. Put it like that. I mean, the answer is uh, is Vladensburg. Sorry, that's the furthest they can retreat. I was about to just call Vladensburg Rothensburg, which is a city in Sweden. So I was a little bit off. Not Rothenburg, but Gothenburg. Gothenburg is a city in. Uh, In Sweden. Got Arthur Brook here. Good old Arthur. He's trying to find a way for, to win this fight. And they're drilling with skirmishes. They're like pouring a lot of fire into two tiny little units. But those skirmishes, they're annoying.
At this point, I kind of retreat a little bit because it's like, I just kind of want the tree line to support me. Fire when ready. But yeah, I mean, the Americans, I think, have got... It looks like they got slightly less troops than me, just because they're stretched out. I have a feeling they got more, because... Oh, uh, well, most of the units are pretty cheap with crap. But also, I mean, they're just kind of spread out. They're just... Their army's kind of just everywhere. You'll, like, just look over here, and you're like, Oh, they've actually got, like, six more units or whatever. And it's like, oh, okay. Britain's in a real bit of trouble now. I mean, I guess they already were with the uh, loss of... Um, like skirms like that really early on. It's a bit of a shame. Britain and uh, America here, Julie. I don't know why America's even got this many troops out here. It really wants to turn this into a bit of a line fight. Maybe he's just into the back lines. I'm not really sure. They're getting both get both sides getting deadly close and close enough to uh to see each other's the whites in their eyes see who's gonna win america's slowly pushing into this tree line though you can see they really want this tree line for themselves it's not a bad idea i mean two reasons to have it it's a good defensible position and also it's a way to clear out the, uh, the british the way inside otherwise it's gonna be just artillery this is a job and that's inaccurate and there's better things to do So the wait for the volley boys. What are you firing at? It's firing down the line of the British. <laughs> Didn't get missed, so I'm not sure. There's a general really hooks the front line now for the Americans. And one stray shot and that's him dead. Got inskilling foot as well to match the inskilling dragoons, which I haven't seen in a little while. I have a feeling they might be dead. Which is a shame. Because the uh, American cab is still around causing all sorts of problems. Fire, we're ready. Or not. I am marching. Britain here, trying to maybe, I don't know, flank around, just give himself another option for attacking this American force over here. Just needs overwhelming guns. Yeah, Britain, uh, Britain's going to get frustrated with these skirms, I can already tell. Twenty first Royal North British. That's very specific, I feel like. You have to be from the north to join that one. Do they have a Royal South one? Who knows? Royal West or Royal East? Royal down the middle. A lot of Fusiliers that end up being. The 90, 98th Prince of Wales foot. That's like similar to like the 90... Uh, like the South S6 in Sharp, which is kind of interesting, actually. Orders understood. Like the Prince of Wales got like half the units in this game named after him. Guess who? Just that nice, eh? Hey? So got West Indy units, very healthy. But yeah, the British moving forward bit by bit. Forming up into their famous line formation. When they've used against the French a dozen times. And here we go. Charge coming from the Americans. 
with their top hats on. Again, the Americans routed here. I mean, we are saying that the Americans are probably better off in melee. Evidently not. These guys are actually kind of getting screwed. Got an artillery in there though. I don't know what he's still saying. Yeah, the Americans over here are starting strong, but still giving way. So yeah, Britain is actually now on the offensive, as you can see here. Like, I mean, they are, they're moving up. They are actually what making a decent push down, straight down the middle here. Tough. Men running out of ammunition, that's never a good sign. But we do have, uh, like, Lincoln and Body Militia here breaking, Essex Militia here. Are they trying to catch these guns or something? Are they going to try and go and get these guns? Not really sure. I might just get hit in the flank in a moment here, but yeah, it can go the Essex Militia into combat. Um, yeah, I think the idea was to go for the guns, but then the uh, the Americans counter charged them, so that's a bit of a shame that the British are on the way. I actually got some in skilling there. Yeah, they was say so they were shooting the uh, shooting the other Brits there. The American general here just you know skirting around, just trying to find something interesting to do. The British over here, though, are, like, taking the fight to the Americans. Doing a decent job. The Americans say, I mean... These look decent troops, to be fair. They kind of look like the British, actually, with their, like, hats. They're looking great. Look at them trying to be like us. It's just not quite the same. Actually, over here, look at this. So, they look like they're going to route these two units here. The line of Jihad is getting absolutely, like, obliterated. Are those skirmishes? And then all of a sudden the British have just chain routed here. A massive, massive loss. I think it's the guns. The artillery piece here is like turning around. Actually, one's facing either way. That's kind of handy. Wish mine would do that. But I mean, there are small infantry units left. I mean, like 27 Herefordshire foot. Oh, my god. Rough. Then we've got a general dying over here. This is not looking too good. Edwin uh, Crookshank here, yeah, Canadian chasseur, has been killed off. And um, that is a big, big loss there. And we've got Cav now coming in. American Cav dashing into the back lines. What are they going to try and go for? It looks, looks, like looks like a Hussar style unit or something like that. Or maybe like a chasseur. But they are dashing in there. Maybe going for this general over here, Isaac Brock. Making himself uh, a bit vulnerable. We do have the Bucks volunteers here. Fire when ready. Or oh, they may be going for Robert Ross. Whatever they're going for, they need to make a decision. They definitely could have maybe got Ross. The Cav, though, scared off by the squares. The volleys from the squares. Oh, sorry, here. Still threatening the British. Put some volatile canister into them. I mean, if they kept shooting the uh, keep shooting the the crew, they should be okay. But we'll see. Here comes the cav. Yes, Over here, it seems like this is going to be where the main fight now takes place. I mean, the British here. I mean, they still are like inflicting decent losses on the Americans, but I mean, the Americans still still got like healthy. Healthy-ish looking units as well. I think the British are just looking a bit more battered. The West Indian infantry here. I think these guys are out of ammunition. I think they're going to go in and try and take out these skirmishes. Our men are running for and there isn't too much left. We've got the Somerset, Somerset foot here trying to do their bit. West in the infantry over here. These guys have been in the action since day one. I mean, the very first minute. It's been insane for them. And they must be running out of ammo soon. Um, the British did get routed over here. And it looks like they're just setting in more infantry. Russell Shafut going into uh, combat. Trying to break these Americans again. They might do it, but it's hard to say.
Americans versus Britain. It's like cousins or something like killing each other. I mean, it could be, I guess, related. It's not been long since the, uh, the Americans rebelled. There you go, another unit gone for the British, that's huh? never a good thing. And here, a lot of units are to run out of ammunition. I'm seeing them actually going to combat. I think these units over here were the ones that ran out of ammo, but I'm not sure. But yeah, the guns actually did get cleared out. This uh, little um, Herefordshire foot unit managed to actually clear out the guns. And now it's actually managed to get away. And it's going to go over here. It's going to try and hit these, these Americans that are forming up. And in they go, fighting off in the forest. And they are routing just like that. The Herefordshire foot doing that a little bit. Every little victory for the British is going to be very key right now. I mean, this is still some healthy, healthy looking units here, like 84. I mean, the 50s are relatively decent as well. But some of this infantry as well for the Americans is pretty good. I mean, this unit particularly looks like looks really nice. Do like the look of this one. And the skirmishes, it's still got so many skirmishes as well. It's just able to just shoot and harass the British lines. We've got the Queen, uh, the Queen, the King's own foot in fact, the Lions. They're still a healthy unit as well, 94, so I mean, yeah, there are still some pretty good health units loitering about. All Our in this forest. Running, Prince of Wales. Yes, yeah, so there's still some decent units loitering about. I mean, there's a British unit back here as well. The Dublin Foot. Don't know what they're doing there, but they need to get back in the fight. Cav hit. Is this Cav? Oh, this is a general. We've got Isaac Brock himself actually joining the fight and getting some kills, you know. Managed to kill off a few of this infantry that charged him. Really nicely done. Monmouth, Monmouthshire foot there, trying to help duel with these uh, these Americans. I feel like he could take them all on. Nineteen health should fall left. I think this might be my final unit when we were playing this battle. I was down to literally nothing. It'd been a brutal fight. The Americans making the advance. They look like they're going for these. Uh, these uh, East Essex foot here, by the looks of it, they are like really close to each other. There you go, in they go. The two lines collide. But yeah, they've gone into combat. It seems like uh, the British not wanting to give any ground there. Looks like the British actually not doing too bad in, uh, in combat. Sending in uh, the Royal Fusiliers as well. Yeah, look at that. Broke both those units. Very impressive there. And now, I mean, all of a sudden, the, the British can make a push for this building if they wanted to. And we've got Royal Fusiliers over here doing their bit. And a general has been killed as well. Another general gone. Sad to see. I'm not sure whose, but... Certainly one of them. Oh, it might be over here. Manly power, I think, is bits in the dust. But he's got some British troops there to avenge him. That could do a whole lot of problems for any of the uh, units that are under that uh, general, general's command there. And there you go. The line infantry erupts once more. Yeah. Trying to get some back shots on those British. Actually routing a few, you know. Yeah, Britain should really just, uh, really should have just pushed on with the 85th and just gone in there. I mean, we've got cavalry here trying to form up into a lot. Uh, cavalry charging in as the infantry tries to form square. I don't think they have, but the cavalry looks like it's been, it's been annihilated. I mean, morale's not looking great there. And yeah, they failed to actually break the, the bucks. They did a decent amount of damage to them, but yeah, they didn't manage to break these guys. Cavalry here, though. This is the last cavalry unit alive. Just trying to harass however it can. 
So we've got British infantry also going to rush into combat. This is a bit of a brave and maybe a foolish decision. The Americans counter charge and they will uh, beat the, uh, the British there in combat. I think it helped with the British just charge throwing men in the back. They definitely just get their, uh, just get what men they can and get out of there and get towards that building. Uh, use that uh, to their advantage. They should then be able to maybe, if they play it right, just wear down the Americans on that on the walls of that building. Because I mean, the Americans certainly now outnumber the British. But the British probably have the quality. It has been a like a battle of attrition. It really has. It's like, so, like you see all the bodies over here in this field. Like my gosh, it's pretty brutal. Look at that. There's a lot of redcoats down there. There's a plenty of Americans as well, and still more fall. The uh, Prince of Wales foot there breaking. Looks like we're about to see the Somerset Somerset foot as well break. King's own royal foot, I mean, what else do you have? The Monmouthshire foot, get them out of there, get everything back. Ross and Brock still both alive. Only just, though. Got the Bucks volunteers as well here. They're actually making an offensive with the British. Can't really imagine it this period of the, like, of the game. Making an offensive, yeah, trying to get another angle, flanking. The Americans here. The Americans actually in retreat, or they were for a moment. Oh jeez, gunning down their own troops here. Really, the Brits are doing it's all they've achieved there. They haven't really done much else. Yeah, poor, poor Prince of Wales uh, foot there just getting gunned down. I imagine the Americans are doing the same. They're hitting anything with probably those retreating men. Kill those goddamn tea sipping of Britons. Well, at the same time, the uh, the British probably shouting, "Kill the damn Yankees! Get rid of them! Get all these uh, get all this remaining for like, these forces back." The uh, the Americans actually look like they maybe put uh, troops into. Um, I look like they're gonna put troops into this building, but then didn't. Look like they're actually going to come over here and try and shoot Isaac Brock. He's having none of it. He's going to go and charge down this, uh, this little skirmish unit here. And the Americans are flanking, as you can see here. Just like a little general and two small units. Looks like we're about to see the Monmouth your light foot turn, ready to face the Americans, but again, they're just going to give away. The Americans don't want them to, to take too many risks. They're just trying to prize the Brits out of this little forested area here. Whether the Brits could really make a dash out of the forest and into the house, I don't know. It's tough to say. I mean, it doesn't seem like they're like this uh, strategy at the moment is really paying off for much. The uh, Americans don't seem to be making, taking too many casualties. But it is certainly slowing down the uh, the casualty rate of the British. They they've not lost too many since that bit of a mass route we just had then. See Isaac Brock over here making a bit of an adventure for himself. He's going out, maybe trying to go and assassinate the American general. Who knows? And the skirmish is coming really close now. I mean, these guys really bold. 
And they're in a little bit of a uh, divot here, so they're actually kind of safe down there. The only fear I think they have from the British right now is probably being bayonet charged. Because these skirmishers probably have as many men as some of the line infantry that the British have remaining. And it looks like we're going to see the Americans make a dash for this building. It looks like they're just going to ignore the, uh, the British lines. So the King's own foot is now moving up, maybe to try and intercept. If they can do that, that's a bit of a win. And we have actually got returning British troops over here. Hope is not yet dead for the British. There's still some hope left. Some more King's Own Royal foot there. Yeah, not long left in this one now. I mean, I think they'll, I'll make a cut in a bit because I think the battle does start to die down in a bit. But right now, it's uh, still looking a bit spicy. I mean, we've got Isaac Brock back here just, you know, chilling and doing his own thing. I believe most of the... Uh, well, this is my general, so most my, my army's dead at this point. So I was just kind of like trying to just be annoying. Maybe just turn some of the guns of the Americans away from uh, the, uh, the line infantry over here that the Americans were focusing down so much. You can see, in fact, I'm just, I don't know, I'm not chasing them down, but being chased down, but being followed. I was also hoping maybe, in all, uh, in all honesty, to try and maybe take out this general. If I lost mine, that would be fine, but killing their general would be more important. The British Lion Infantry over here is still trying to duel with those uh, Americans. Yeah, I'm going to make a quick cut here because there isn't exactly too much going on. So the British uh, have kind of stopped firing at the, uh, the Americans. The Americans are just trying to skirt around them. So I'll be back in a moment when the battle recommences. So we are back and the Monmouthshire Lightfoot are bombarding this building that the Americans have now got themselves into. So they did sneak around the road here and they, uh, they did get into the building here to try and occupy it and just try and uh, try and break the, the British on, on this... Uh, on this building, really. It's like their own little fortress, their own little castle that they're going to try and defend to the very end. British infantry here. They return, trying to duel with the, uh, do a bit of rear guard action here. Dueling with the Americans. Oh, red morale, they're not looking great. These guys are probably going to break any moment now, but they're also going to take one of the Americans with them by the looks of it. Yeah, combat loses slightly, or maybe not. It's two versus one, what do they expect? Enough, but they're going to get a support from another King's Own Royal Foot. Brody came like a second early to help them and get at least one volley off. Now the British are down to what, three units? Bit of a shame. Um, unfortunately for me, Isaac Brock did actually break. He got shot by skirmishers and uh, ran away. So it's a sad thing to see, but it does happen. Um, there are some big breaking American units over here, though. I don't know if this is recent, but just passing on through, so it must be pretty recent. The last few units arriving. Got skirmishes over here as well, trying to just snipe Ross. What a cowardly way to try and take out a, uh, a hero of the British Army. Yeah, the Monmouth should like for here. They're just pounding away this building. I love when the officer fires like his pistol, he makes like a slightly different noise. And you're saying, oh, it's getting serious, the officers having to get involved in the fight. Uh, I mean, all they are able to, like, all the Americans are able to fire at the moment with foot was just this one guy here. But at the same time, you got to think, all that ammunition is being expended just to hit that one man as well, by the British. Um, it does seem like, I don't know where that American is, oh no, it's tiny little American units just over here. They're going to try and loop around, I think. What else do we have here? The young, 
For the uh, I've come young bucks, but the bucks volunteers. Some of their units are shooting into this little shack here, but the rest of them are harassing the Americans. They are trying to hide behind the building. If only the British had like one grenadier unit right now, or like one sap unit to take this building. Rush them in, take this building. But yeah, it's really coming down to the wire. I mean, there's what, three British units left, plus a general. And then there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. American ones. I mean, yeah, the Americans not looking great. They're actually sallying out. Wow, they uh, try to charge out with these skirmishes. The moment the life for having none of it. They're like, nah, you get back in your building, sir. Americans now drooling to the flank. Realizing they can't, haven't got that many guns firing on the moment the life for. They're like, get some more guns up, boys. Also still fighting in their sophisticated top hats, some of them. Clearly they were like had a dinner reservation after this battle. So like, you know what? Or well, they came from a dinner reservation. So like, you know what? I'm gonna go with my top hat. Everyone else is. Clearly the style of the War of 1812, everyone wear a top hat. But again, like I said, uh, a line battle kind of favors the British. Why do the British have enough infantry to make this a favorable line fight as well? Hard to say. Really hard to say, to be honest. These bucks volunteers get them up. Does look a little bit, uh, a little bit dicey now for the Americans. They've got some some units to keep fluctuating in morale, and the generals are fairly close to the front line. So, like one straight bullet that hits a general could be a real problem for there for the Americans. Immediate. Oh, are the Monmouth and Lightfoot going to maybe go for a charge? I think they might. I think they're going to go in. I thought maybe they're going to go in. I think instead we're going to see the Bucks volunteers make the charge into the building. Yeah, in they go. Look at that. So Britain's going to do and die in this building here. Morale for the Americans. I mean, it's not bad. It's not great. Losing slightly of the Bucks. Morale, though, is the real thing. Here, look at this. The Americans, well, they could get cleaned out of the building here. Yeah, one gone. I think we might see the other one. Yeah, break as well. And that is a big loss there for the uh, for the Americans. Building captured. And now we're going to see the Americans charge here. But the British just counter charge. Yep, easily done. Can they retake the building, the Americans? I don't know. We'll see. They're all battling at this doorway here. There's no room in the end, boys. No room for the damn Yankees. And there you go. Another unit scared off. There's still one. Oh, no, it's the general in there. There's one infantry unit left and a couple of skirms. The skirms, they might have the ability to, you know, just take out these guys. So, I forgot who it was, just comparing them and saying, are these got, like, goddamn skirmish grenadiers or something like that? They're, like, impossible to kill. There you go, another unit break from there, the Mom should like, but finally giving in. General here. Routed. And that unit is broken as well for the British. We have a general sidestepping his way in. Understood. 
We have Ross still alive. He needs to really stay alive, otherwise this unit, this general here, could, oh, this unit here could be in real trouble. I don't know what's in this building, but it's beating the, uh, beating the British. Combat and losing slightly, um, and morale's not great. I have no idea what's in it. I think it's a skirmisher. General, General's now dead. It must be like a... The British held on whatever it was in there. It might still be in that general. Right yeah, the uh, the bugged volunteers hold on for now. It's just coming down to the very last like units on both sides. Like There's one unit for either side and they go... The British have lost the building, and like in the last dying seconds, they, they've lost the battle. Unfortunately, I think. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, Ross is now going to just charge into the building on his own. Um, and just try and take it himself. Look at this man, sidestepping his way with these massive balls that he has. He's fought a long, hard fight, but there you go. Ross is about to Our die in that building running, with the rest of his men. And that is the Battle of Blandersburg. The, Brit uh, the British have been beaten, and the Americans only come out with three tiny little units there. Unfortunately, we cannot see the end result. And this is from Johnny Le Buffoon's perspective. Um, so, yeah, well done to him. Um, I was playing on his side as well, along with K1 and Paranoid, so well done to those guys. Well done to all the American players as well. Um, I, yeah, I don't know why the unit um, results aren't starting to show anymore. I'm going to have to just start making sure I have them at the end and just sticking them up. Uh, maybe, like future pope has done it i don't know we'll see um but yeah kills here i mean we've got 274 kills for a west indie unit that was uh johnny 228 for manly power really well done uh wiltshire fuck getting 206 205 for the bucks volunteers um yeah a lot of great kills here to be honest so yeah really well done there to johnny um but yeah that's the battle of blandersburg History has been changed. The White House will not be burnt this time. The Americans will get away with that for now. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the battle. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment show your support. And I'll see you guys in the next one.